G'day YouTube. Warbles on a lot. Here. With a mad scientist video. Tackling the topic of the magical Dunning-Kruger gear ratio effect. I'm sure you've heard of Dunning and Kruger. They got the Ig Nobel Prize for working out that it's not what you don't know that hurts you. It's what you don't know that you do not know. And what I did not know is that Dunning-Kruger effect applies to gear ratios. Now my understanding of the magical Dunning-Kruger gear ratio effect came about in the following way. I was visiting a friend's place. The television in his living room carried a news item. The illustration, the visual showed a horse trainer who was training his horses by having them on a step uh, treadmill inside and the treadmills had conveyor belts operated by electric motors run by grid power out of the wall. And my friend said, oh, that's stupid. They should have the conveyor belt running a generator and get the horse to make electricity. My comment is you probably wouldn't make enough current to charge a mobile phone. And old mate went huff and puff and told me how wrong I was because levers are long and gear ratios and step up and horses are big. And me being me, I went and I thought about it. And on the one hand, my grip on things mechanical and scientific may come from the 11th printing October 1969 of the Book of Science and Construction, which was copyrighted in 1921. So it's kind of old, but it does explain the basic principles of leverage using several examples. Then it moves on to pulleys and gears. And here's an interesting drawing. The text which goes with this drawing states, If the shafts or axles of the two gears are the same size, and a cable or rope supporting a weight which would tend to turn the pulleys is wrapped around each, a weight of 10 pounds on the shaft of the small gear will balance a weight of 40 pounds on the shaft of the large gear. And this is what we call a four to one ratio. If you turn the little gear and it drives the big wheel, that would be called a reduction ratio because it reduces the shaft speed of the large gear. And it will turn, in theory, 10 pounds of twistiness into 40 pounds of twistiness. However, nothing's 100% efficient. And the mechanical friction from those sinusoidal gear teeth, as they mesh, is going to suck up about 10% of the transmitted twistiness or torque. So your reduction drive <clears throat> will transmit 36 pounds, not 40 pounds, at one quarter the shaft speed. And if you run that thing backwards as a step up ratio, your 40 pounds of pull on the axle will become 90% of 10 pounds of pull on the axle, and you'll get four times the shaft speed. Step up ratios multiply the RPM, but they divide the output torque. That's just a fact of life. So then we consider the fact that once upon a time steam engines took over from horses. And your horse, when it's working, your pit pony works for four hours, and when it's pulling a load, it pulls at one foot per second on a rope. And that rope goes over a one foot diameter pulley. So the pulley turns 19.09 revolutions per minute, and it will lift 500 pounds of water plus 50 pounds of bucket, so 550 pounds going up one foot in one second is one horsepower. But that's in a second. In a minute, that's 33,000 foot-pound minutes. Horsepower is then a unit of power, namely the accomplishment of 33,000 foot-pounds of work in one minute, expressed as one horsepower HP. And another way of expressing the amount of work done by a horsepower is to convert it all to electricity. And depending on your textbook, a horsepower worth of electricity is either 736 watts or 746 watts, giving an average of 742. And I like to be a bit conservative, so I call an electric horsepower 740 watts. 
just a personal quirk. But just as the early steam engines had to compete with what an actual horse could do, there were people who wanted to use machines which were designed for steam horsepower equivalents, i.e. 19 revolution, 19.09 revolutions per minute of a one foot diameter pulley dragging 550 pounds on a rope per second. So John Gray and Company of Uddingston by Glasgow put together a machine like this, which I showed in the earlier video, titled Horse Powered Electricity. It has a 13 foot long lever. So it's 26 times the radius of the pulley, which a steam engine had to compete with in order to equate to a horse. Instead of 19.09 revolutions per minute, you're talking 0.74 of a revolution per minute. And that drives a crown wheel with 76 teeth. And the crown wheel operates a pinion with 14 teeth. So you've got a 5.428 to 1 step up of the shaft speed, which results in 4.01 RPM and your 26 horsepower worth of leverage advantage which you have obtained from your one single horse walking at 60 feet per minute around an 81.714 foot circumference delivering 14,300 pounds of pull or twistiness to the capstan with which to drive the crown wheel yeah that's what you wind up with 4.3 horsepower at 4 rpm and then you put that into a 5.57 to 1 step up gear drive 78 tooth onto 14 tooth and you wind up with 22.3 rpm and you would have 0.7736492 of a horsepower but this gear drive is only 0.9 efficient it's like this one's 90 percent efficient so what you're looking at is 0.6962842 of a horsepower almost 70 percent of a horsepower at 115 percent of the rpm that an actual horse would be able to put into a one foot pulley if it was just pulling on a string tie wrapped around the pulley with something else loading up the shaft so this 30 to 1 step up ratio is 80% efficient at turning one horse into 7 tenths of a horse in the form of a rotating shaft that you can connect something onto. And I think that's pretty cool. But to generate electricity you need a minimum of sort of 300 RPM. Which involves an extra 13.63 to 1 step up ratio achieved in two stages. As you can see the blue allegations are today's corrections. And what you wind up with is 0 0.0485799 of a horsepower at 299 RPM, which is uh, 25.382995 foot pound seconds, which can be equated to 34.15 watts of torque in the shaft multiplied by 0.85 because the generator is 85% efficient and that gives us 29.02 watts of current 29 watts a bit better than the 21.69 watts which last week's allegation came up with because somewhere around there I got a figure wrong so I explained all that and showed the diagrams to old mate and he went kind of ballistic and he huffed and he puffed and I was totally wrong and his theory is that this 26 to 1 lever is 100% efficient. I kind of agree with him there. Um, then he reckons that this gear ratio, it's 90% efficient. So 90% of that power gets through the gear ratio. And then this one's 90% efficient. And both the belt drives are 95% efficient. So he figures you should get 73% of a horsepower at 300 RPM. And then you can just turn that into electricity and... He thinks he should get at least 450 watts. But then he went looking on YouTube, instructing me to look at this horse mill generating electricity with horses, which claims 13 light bulbs at 60 watts each, driven by one horse, and it has a commutator, for some reason, on the shaft. I don't know why you'd want a commutator on the shaft if you catch them, but it has.
and we can see that a bit over half the bulbs are dimly glowing. And it looks like a big old wind turbine generator, maybe 36 or 48 watt volts. So from his 740 watt horse, he's claiming 780 watts of electricity, which is 1.05 to 1. Output exceeds input. It's an over-unity device. It's better than perpetual motion. And I argued with him. And then, in the same message telling me to look at that, he reckons that most people claim two kilowatts for a single horse. When I claimed him to be uh, seeking a free lunch, he says, it's not a free lunch. 90 amps at 12 volts is 1080 watts. Resistance in generation and friction allow a horse to power 780 watts of lights as experiment shows. The next rebuttal, no, that's not our newton meters or foot pounds or watts get converted. The torque is correct at 19,240 foot pounds, but that is not watts. 19,240 times one RPM is 3.7 horsepower. This happens because the lever increases the torque, not the RPM. A horse also cannot sustain that for long. The actual power is less than 3.7 horsepower. Actually, it's about 1.8 kilowatts per horse if all engineered nicely. 1800 watts divided by 740 watts to the horsepower, 2.43 horsepower per horse. Then he went off into conservation of angular momentum using the Newton pound. So I sent him this diagram and I translated uh, the TypeScript, you know, in a mobile phone because the camera wasn't good enough. And his response was no, Newton laws of motion stated that, state that the energy stays the same. So one horsepower in is one horsepower out. Imagine I have a winch. If I have a five inch pulley and 10 inch pulley on one shaft, then the five inch pulley moves half the distance with twice the force. A one inch pulley on the same shaft has 10 times the torque, but will only move a mass one tenth the distance to exert the same work. So I've figured out that what he's done is he's become bedazzled by the mechanical efficiency of the driving tooth loading up the driven tooth and he's not paying any attention at all whatsoever to the rpm translation and the torque translation he's only dealing with half of the equation he's dealing with the efficiency of the load transfer out here he's not dealing with any of this leverage but I don't know, it could be a case of two fools have met. By training, I'm a registered general nurse. He's a storeman and packer, and he used to be a cook in an old people's home. Neither one of us is a mechanical engineer. Neither one of us is qualified to hold an opinion on this. I have, however, flown behind a lawnmower engine that had a three to one reduction drive with a bicycle chain to its propeller, and it flew better than a 22 horsepower engine direct drive to a propeller pretty much the same size. I think I understand how gear ratios work. He thinks he understands how power transmission works. I have run this with the textbook past my son and he tends to agree with me that allowing for your gear ratios you're likely to get more like 30 watts out of a horse than you are to get 780 watts out of a horse. But if there's somebody out there among my viewers who's qualified to tell me whether I'm full of shit or whether my friend is full of shit, I would appreciate it if they could show up in the comments thread and adjudicate. The sort of people I'm hoping will show up would be, say, Desert File, Project Farm, Tom the Pru Frugal Prepper, Perhaps even Thunderfoot, you know, you can get a laugh out of this. Let's face it, there's a couple of kangaroos in a swamp wallaby just sitting around, listening to me, talking to myself about the mysteries of gear ratios. But they don't know that they do not know. I wonder if that's Dunning-Kruger effect as well. Answers, please. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao.